And make a real long story pretty quick. Um, I lost all vision in that eye permanently within the next year and um, still can't see anything from this side on. And what was worse, the doctor said that that was likely the product of a rare genetic condition called von Hippel-Lindau, which essentially shuts off one of the body's most powerful tumor suppressors. And so I went through and did the genetic testing, and it turned out I did have that. And so there wasn't a lot of knowledge about this condition back then. It was very rare. It wasn't in my family, even though it's normally hereditary. And as a product of that, this eye doctor was telling me that I would likely face, I'd likely have kidney cancer, pancreatic cancer, uh, tumors in my spine, adrenal glands, brain, a host of the areas over the next 10, 20 years. And um, in the years since that diagnosis, I have battled and currently have cancer in my kidneys and pancreas and adrenal glands and spine and a host of major areas. So uh, just a couple thoughts on that. One is that um, when I look back on that diagnosis retrospectively, what's remarkable to me is that what it really got me focused on was what are all the little things I can find that I can do yet today that make a difference for another person and can kind of live on beyond my lifetime and when I'm here. So that's a lot of what I'll focus on today. Another reason I bring that up is because I've, as a product of that disorder, I've essentially become a professional patient for the last 20, 25 years. And so every six to 12 months, and I'll go again in two weeks here, I go to the National Institutes of Health and I spend a, an entire week, what I now affectionately call my family, tubing for the whole week. So I spend the whole week in MR and CT machines. And if all goes well, I come out at the end of that week with another year's lease on life, essentially. But what I've learned in that process of being spending way too much time in hospitals and medical centers is that, you know, early on, I realized I want to go find all these great doctors and spend time with the world's top doctors, and we're trying to seek out experts in all these areas and studying the literature. But what really makes a difference at each medical center I've been to are the nurses and staff and people at the front desk that surround the physicians in these institutions. And especially when I was young, I remember going in there and you, you might get a few minutes with the physician as, you're, as I was in there for an eye exam or whatever it might be. But what shaped my entire impression, not only of, the, of each uh, facility I was at in each medical center, but what either gave me confidence about where I was headed or was frustrating and challenging in those critical moments were all the people that either made that a really good place to work and a really energized place to be that cared about patients, or to be really honest, in many cases I had the exact opposite experiences. And, it, and the other thing that I noticed quickly is, as I've grown up as someone studying workplaces is I could go to the exact same building and on one floor in department, um, people are almost yelling at me as a patient when I walk in. The other one, people are warm and welcoming and know your name and know what's going on. And there is nothing that makes more of a difference, not only for me, but for my family members and loved ones that come along. So um, on behalf of a lot of us patients who spend a lot of time benefiting from your efforts, thank you so much for all that you do. And I think it's hard to understate the emotional well-being that you create for people on a day-to-day -day basis just by listening and smiling and caring and having the energy that you need to be your best on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's what I'd like to focus on here today because that's one challenge I see time and time again with, and it's almost specific to the most caring people I know, and the most caring people in the fabric of our society is that they often put everyone else's needs ahead of their own. And even if you just want to do a great job of serving your patients and staff and the people you care about, there are some things to put first so you can be more effective for them that I'll get into today.